Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be upgrading the Procedure Worlds products and upgrading our Unity to URP. Um, we've had a few questions about this. So to start off, we're going to use the 3D built-in render pipeline core. Um, and then we're going to create our project. In this version I'm using 2022.3 LTS. Now with this project open, the same uh, method is going to work if you're going to go HTRP as well. But what I typically do is go to Window Package Manager. And then here, I will actually start importing the assets I'm going to have. Um, or the, the assets I'm going to use first. So we're going to find Gaia. Yep, there's Gaia. So we're going to download this. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and import Gina Pro. You've pre-compiled assemblies um, for their Unity's APIs. Do you want to update them? Click yes. Okay. Now, as far as Gaia Pro 2021 is concerned, if you're using Unity 2022.3, I recommend if you're going to be using HDRP, to use Gaia Pro 2021 because in this version of Unity, the Unity does not have a uh, HDRP shader for grass. So the way we combated this was we had a system called Flora uh, that we introduced in Gaia Pro 2021 that allows you to have uh, vegetation, grass vegetation inside of Unity. If you're using URP, um, you can use the new Gaia Pro 2023 because uh, grass will still work for that, um, but it's totally up to you. Um, we're just going to import Gaia Pro 2021. Okay, now that it's finished, again, I would go through <clears throat> and import any other assets that you want to use. And then after that, the next thing I would do is go to the Unity Registry. I'm going to find the Post Processing. Go ahead and install this. Okay, and then depending on what exactly you're wanting to use, you can go ahead and install the new input system. So, um, if we're going to switch over, so Gaia automatically is set up for uh, the built-in render pipeline. Go sh show Gaia Manager. You can visit Canopy and ask for support or look at other documentations. So here we have the setup project, which in the render settings, this is showing that it's for built in. <clears throat> we can switch to the deferred rendering path or switch to linear color space. Now, because we're going to switch to URP or ACRP at this point, um, we don't need to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and install the Universal Render Pipeline. Or you can install the HDRP Pipeline. The reason that you want to install 
the universal render pipeline or HDRP is because it will take a note of all the assets that are in the project and automatically try to update them so that way you don't have to do that but if you add in another package after this is installed then it's going to go back through and you're going to have to manually um, upgrade it to the universal render pipeline or HDRP. Okay, now that that's finished, we're going to go to Window, Procedure Worlds, Gaia, Show Gaia Manager. We're going to change the built into Universal. You can go ahead and switch to the deferred linear path if you so choose. We're going to upgrade. You're about to change Gaia to the Universal Render Pipeline. Yes, would you like to save the scene? Okay, after that's done, we need to install the shaders. So we're going to click Install Shaders. Okay, and now we are ready to go. So at this point, I'm going to zoom out. And we can start creating our world and testing all of this. The big thing to look for after all this is done if you go to edit project settings player go to other settings <clears throat> and here in the script will define symbols we see gina pro um the up pipeline Gaia pro we, we'll see gina urp we'll see all of these symbols in here which means that we have successfully gone over to urp so now let's create our world so we're going to go with medium, that's fine, desktop, Alpine Meadows, and the world designer, which is the random terrain generation. Click create world designer. Here we see a preview of our world. So we can go over here, open up the world shape and world details. And you can click this randomize all button, which will randomize the terrain for you. Um, you can adjust these sliders for the stamp density uh, stamp jitter with an impact. Um, we do have a full video about the world designer as well that you can look at. But we'll just quickly make something here. There you go, that works. So I'm going to click generate world. This is basically saying that if you have any other terrains that it is enabled, this will delete your terrains and start a brand new world from scratch. There we go, so now we have our base terrain. Again, this is still a unity terrain. We're just adding our stuff on top of it. Um, if you wanted to, you know, enhance this further, you could go back to the world designer, but you could also use the stamper. So if we go to the advanced Gaia tools and click on stamper, this has our normal base stamping if you wanted to do manual adjustments. The only thing with this is that you need to get this ready to interact with your terrain. Um, so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna add a mask in. You can go to something like a distance mask and then set this to world space. You can go into like a circle and then we can add in more if we wanted to change the influence to global and then go back to local space for the mass space see and then that way you have a really nice blend between the two if you wanted to create another mountain and so forth so we can just do something like uh, so the mountain right in the middle like that maybe you can also change your stamper preview down here and this will have different stamps you can pick between or you can make your own custom ones and then they will show up in here but then we're just going to go click stamp and it should automatically texture just the stamp area 
So you will see this line here. Now how to get rid of that line is we just need to run our texture spawner in our biome again. And now that's fixed. So we have our Gaia world and then let's go ahead and create a Gina um, river. And make sure that gizmos is enabled, which is this little button up here. And then you can just click there and it's going to automatically try to find a path for us. And then you can click uh, create Gina river spline. Yep, so there's a river spline there. You could simplify this, snap to ground. Um, we could carve this out as well. Maybe adjust the width here, the offset. And then maybe adjust our shoulder. Something like that, maybe. Add some noise in and then click clar carve. Um, we could go to the river here and change the start depth, which give us a little bit more control here. Maybe shorten that, that width of the river so it looks a little more natural here. We could adjust this too if we wanted to. Say something like this. This just is a little bit of playing around and figuring out what you want to do with this. So if you click on a node and then you click um, control and then left click again, then you can keep adding uh, parts to it. And if we do this, do this as well. Something like that. Whatever you're wanting to do here, you can delete nodes in between them as well if you don't need them. There's a lot more settings in here as well um, for changing end cap distance, um, changing the width, what we want this to be. Then you can go back in and carve this out and make this look a little bit better. Or decrease the uh, height offset here, carve, something like that. Oops. And then adjust this some more. I don't like this little spot. And then I'm going to connect these two like that. So I just clicked on this one, clicked on that one, hit control, and clicked. So now it's set perfectly. And again, you can just keep playing with this. But we have our little river there. And then now we'll spawn the rest of our biome in. We've already spawned the textures. You could go ahead and respawn the textures since we made some changes over here. But we just click spawn biome. there we go and now we have our world and uh, let's go ahead and add in our runtime so then we're going to go back to the guy manager we're going to go to create runtime oh that looks good save this out just in case <clears throat> quick bake lighting create our runtime hit yes There's our runtime. Uh, let's go to do, 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 guy runtime, guy lighting, and you can change these profiles around. So we can do the procedure world sky. We can enable time of day if we wanted to, and just adjust that time scale if we wanted to, change where it starts from. We can add in our weather stuff in here as well, 
or we can disable our weather effects. But now we have that. And then let's go to our player, our fly camera. There is our fly camera. Let's move him over here. We save the scene and then we click play. There we go. We have just made our Gaia scene in URP. So you can adjust this some more, play with the settings. Um, now I guess for a little, little extra tip. You can adjust the water to kind of match. Um, see how we have this like square bit where you can still see the bottom of the train. You can click on the water here and then go to create new profile and you can change this transparent distance. You can make it sharper if you want to make it, or I guess it would be making it deeper. And just do a little bit of the edge there. But we have our train now. You can adjust this a bit more. Um, another question I get asked all the time is how do I adjust um, the river so that way it's not these like sharp edgings and stuff like that. Um, what I tell people a lot is that you can one keep adjusting this with the carve um, and adjusting the shoulder and so forth. Um, the other big thing that I like to do is like find some of these rocks. Fun. Guy spawned objects. Uh, tree stump. Stones. There's one. Just control D that. Duplicate it. What I'll tend to do as well is, is um, like add rocks on the side. If you uh, want to go for that. You can also just do that directly from the Gina's uh, river spline as well. You can create a rock spawner. So we'll just do create spawner like that. And then we'll create a Gina spawner. Add spawner. Oh, this rock spawner. <clears throat> like that. New palette. We'll just do default palette. And then we'll add the prefab in. So I want to grab this rock again. And click on the prefab. There's the prefab. So that spawner, we will grab that stone and add the prefab there. Make sure that instance is set one to one. Turn off the throw distance. That should be fine here. Min max rotation, the rotation should probably be fine here. The scale should be fine. All the rest of this looks good. We'll go back to our river spawn and we'll add that spawner in. Okay, and then we'll adjust that flow rate. And turn off that throw distance and then move the position closer to like the edge. And if you can see, we're changing these little dots here. And align the spline to inform the slope snap to ground. We may need to go back to our spawner here. 
do for spawn. Yep, there we go. Now you can see it's lit up. Change that flow density. This is just kind of preference and where you want these things to spawn. But we'll just say this for now. And there's your rocks. You can increase the size of them and so forth as well back through your other spawner. But yeah, that's another way to, to do that as well. And you can actually just take the same thing. Create a spawner and add that <clears throat> same spawner back. And then just go to the other side. Like so. And this is great for like sidewalks if you're doing a road or you know barriers or whatever it is you're wanting to do there. And just change that throw rate down. Change that spawner range down. Same thing, and then click spawn. And there they are. Snap the ground. Line the spine. Form the slope. Snap the ground. And there we go. And you can make them bigger, smaller, so forth. But that's how you set up your project for URP and HDRP is pretty much the same way, like I said. Um, and you're good to go. So, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll catch you next time.